I don't know what to say about Glaber defensively at shortstop after what we saw last night in the Bronx. Uh, you know, we talked about it during the course of the offseason. I don't look at him as a shortstop. I don't. I think he's a second baseman more so than anything else. I don't want to come on the airwaves and scream, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. It's your favorite I wasn't thing. alone. Joel Sherman, <laughs> you know, Joel Sherman went out there in the post and talked about it throughout the course of the offseason as well. So I wasn't the only one that was looking at Glaber defensively at shortstop. But He's not a shortstop. I mean, it it just square peg, round hole. He's a lot more comfortable defensively at second base. Brian Cashman has talked about the fact that the Yankees look at him as a better defensive second baseman. I don't need to hear Aaron Boone after the game saying, well, he's got the tools, the package to be able to uh, do what he needs to do defensively at shortstop. He's been bad. And this is not him being out of shape. As you heard Brian Cashman give that excuse when baseball got re-upped last last summer as compared to where Glaber Torres was in shape last March. This is a case of a guy, whether or not he is confident enough to play the position defensively and and be able to play shortstop. And and I I don't need to hear any longer about what he did in the minor leagues. It's different minor leagues as compared to major leagues. And I think we've seen enough about the comfortability level of Glaber Torres where it is an issue. I mean, there's, there's no other way to cut it. It's an issue for this Yankee team. I hold my breath every time a ball is hit to the left side of the infield and it's not hit to the third baseman, Gio Urshela. I hold my breath because I have no idea where the throw is going to go. I have no idea whether or not he's going to pick it clean. I have no idea if the footwork's going to get messed up. I have no idea when I look at Glaber Torres defensively at shortstop. Jack Curry last night in the SM work made a great point uh, comparing and talking about Glaber defensively as compared to Derek Jeter, Maggie, because you heard it all over the course of his career with Derek Jeter, the lack of range, how good is he defensively, but Curry made a wonderful point. Here's the point that Jack Curry made and deserves to be echoed. And that is every time the routine play, the routine play, every time Derek Jeter needed to make a play, the play was made. He might not have been Ozzie Smith at shortstop. He was not Omar Vizquel at shortstop. But you knew when the play needed to be made, Derek Jeter was putting on the numbers and making the play. And last night, the throw by Glaber Torres. Now, listen, they don't have Don Mattingly at first base. Jay Bruce is not that. And Luke Voigt is not that either. Now, a better defensive first baseman picks that errant throw, and we're talking about it out there instead of the ball getting by him. However, given the circumstances, Glaber Torres has got to put on the numbers. He's got to put on the jersey, and you've seen it now. In a short amount of time, he hasn't gotten off to a good start defensively. He's gotten off to an atrocious start defensively. And how much more do you need to see here? The Yankees, unfortunately, though, have painted themselves in the corner. I don't know what their options are if Glaber continues to struggle defensively. They're going to talk about his work ethic. They're going to talk about him, you know, latching on to G.J. LeMayu, what he's doing pregame, the defensive metrics, positioning, all these different things that they're going to talk about. Athletically, he can play the position. I question that, but what more can the Yankees do right now, and what can they do roster-wise? They painted themselves into a corner. Glaber Torres has to be the shortstop. Yeah, but you know what? Maybe not. Maybe not. And I was one of those people who thought maybe Glaber could still improve defensively. And hey, he's so young, and he's only 24, and he can grow into this role. And you know, but he's searching. He's searching, and I don't think the Yankees know what's wrong either. Are they going to talk about his internal clock, as Flash was talking about last night on the on the post game show? Are they going to talk about his footwork, the arm angle? Is it the pregame, you know, sort of routine, as you said, and as Cashman told us? I mean, what is it? Because it doesn't seem like anyone knows. He might have the tools, and that's fine. If you're at the major league level playing shortstop for the Yankees, I'm just going to go ahead and assume you got the tools, right? (laughs) But you got to use the tools. And it's not, you know, yesterday, obviously when the game is at the critical juncture, when you're in extras and you are in a dogfight here trying to go for a sweep of a team that you've just been absolutely crushing at Yankee Stadium going back to like May of 2019. I mean, they destroy the Orioles, but you find yourself in a dogfight here in a team that was hungry for this win. The Orioles were. They never, ever, ever conceded a moment of that game yesterday. And the fact that Severino was busting at the catcher, that is, for the Orioles, was busting it down the line, and that would have made Glaber Torres rush that throw, and that's what could have led to the error. I mean, That's got to make any Yankee fan super nervous. Of course it's got to make the Yankees nervous. Now, the question becomes, because it is so early in the season, but you have this sort of track record of Glaber and committing errors at that position. And, oh, by the way, kind of a lot of errors at second, too, if we want to go back and look at the numbers. But you are early in the season. So, Moose, you're right. You may have painted yourself in a corner here, but you're looking at a team that's World Series or bust. So 
when does it become the a, a plan to reshuffle the infield? When does it get to that point? It's not going to be there today. After six games, it's not going to be there. Of course not. But when does it become an issue, and when does the issue get forced to the point where you do have to make some kind of a shuffle, and you do have to put Glaber back at second and either put Tyler Wade at short, move DJ to first, Jay Bruce can play every couple days, you can play platoons, and then DJ can go to third, you can shuffle things around. When Voight comes back, you cross that bridge when you come to it. Or Lindsay Adler wrote in The Athletic today, and I think she had an interesting point. Is this going to force the Yankees' hand to try to make a trade for Trevor Story midseason? There are so many tentacles here with the fact that Glaber has gotten off to a poor start because, Moose, the thing is, is it, yeah, you could say they've painted themselves into a corner, but when you have these type of expectations, you have to expect that the Yankees have some kind of a, of a plan. Because if yeah, this continues he, and you can't trust your shortstop to make a throw to first, you got problems. You got well, major I've, problems. They do have problems with defensively at the shortstop position. But, Maggie, why didn't they say it? I mean, that, that, you, we talk about pride a lot with the Giants. Or I would say, um, it, you know, when you when you look at the Giants, sometimes they're a little bit too loyal in their decision-making, right? Sometimes right. I look at the Yankees, and they want to prove everyone that they're right. They don't want to show everybody that they're the smartest team in the room, right? They they do. They they patted themselves last year on the back after they lost to the Tampa Bay Rays. We t- we came on, we aired that presser, you know, Brian Cashman and Boone and the like, and you know the Yankees patting themselves on the back. We're just as smart as the Tampa Bay Rays, even though they were getting absolutely lit up for what they did in 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 taking Debbie Garcia out and bringing uh, Jay Happ in in that playoff series. So the Yankees want to prove that they're right with Gary Sanchez. Want to show you just how smart they are because they uncovered Luke Voigt. And now you look at Glaber Torres. They were unhappy with the defensive metrics of Didi Gregorius at shortstop. So they decided to move on from Didi and move Glaber over to the shortstop position. And they want to show you just how smart they are with Glaber Torres defensively here at short. Because, Maggie, listen, they could go get, and Lindsay might be right, maybe at the trade deadline, maybe one of these shortstops do loosen up and you can go get Trevor Story from the Colorado Rockies, right? But right now, in the here and now, Right, they just acquired Rugnet de Door from the Texas Rangers, who got designated for assignment. He's got se- he's got all the experience at second base. Uh, you know, the Rangers are telling people he can play a little third, so second and third base. But primarily, you know, he is a second baseman. Sure. What are you going to do here now if you're the Yankees? You're not moving. If you move Glaber Torres over to second base. And you bring in, say, unidentified defensive shortstop where you well, stay Wade. in-house and you make yeah. Wade your shortstop, whatever it might be. But say you bring somebody, but maybe Wade's your shortstop. Then what are you going to do? You, what are you, you, DJ LeMahieu is going to be your everyday first baseman. What do you do then with Luke Voigt when he's back and healthy and ready to go? What exactly do you do then if you're this Yankee team? That's where I feel like the Yankees had an opportunity this offseason. We talked about it at the time. We said, you know what, adjust. Realize, trust what your eyes are seeing. Hell with the analytics. I don't care what the analytics are telling you. Trust what we're watching on a day-in, day-out basis. I don't care that he was out of shape. Does he look comfortable defensively at the position? He does not look comfortable defensively at the position. Trust what you're watching. And the Yankees decided to say thanks but no thanks, and they're rolling the same team back. And now you've got an issue. Now you got an issue that's not easily rectified because you're watching a player struggling defensively, searching. You mentioned confidence-wise, absolute zero at that position. And what you hope is that, and you saw it, you saw it last year, affecting his offense. Is it going to affect his offense? Is it going to affect what he is up at the plate? He was a lot better offensively when he was at second base as compared to when he was at shortstop. And you look at it, that's the one thing you don't want to have because that's the thing that separates Glaber Torres from a lot of middle infielders in Major League Baseball is what he can do with the bat. Yeah, and it was interesting last night. I mean, lots of exciting plays at the plate last night, and, and last night was unfortunately the Yankees lose, but, man, that was a really exciting game. And you have Glaber, who's there on deck, and they send Gio Urshela around, and he ends up getting called out at home. Game's over, and you wonder, with Glaber sitting there on deck, if he could have been able to you know, go out and, and win that game for them, but never gets the opportunity to. Listen, we don't know, right? And they're... They're going to have to let him try to play his way out of this. And that might be the only way. It might be the only way is the more reps and just getting more comfortable and as the season goes on, settling in. But that's, man, cross your fingers. I mean, in, in, in a season where your World Series are bust, are we crossing our fingers with, you know, your your shortstop? I don't, I, it's hard. It, it's hard.
hard, but I don't know when that breaking point comes. When does that turning point come? We talked about it before the season. How long of a rope would Gary would Gary Sanchez have if he struggles? Well, he hasn't struggled. He's played very well, so he's going to continue to play. But how long before the Yankees would have to do something if Gary did struggle? That's not a storyline right now. How long can the Yankees go if Glaber continues to struggle? And are they going to be forced into doing something? And that's going to be the big question that they have because nobody's going to say if they sit there and they just continue and Glaber racks up 17 errors this year or something like that, it's going to be a disaster. And and, and the spotlight's going to be on him and the microscope is going to be just right up his nose, put it that way. Right. I I guess my question would be when, if if he is ever going to figure out what's going to lead him to figuring it out. Like, you watch him, and people will tell you, you know, he's got the arm of a second baseman. He doesn't have, you know, you look at the way Lindor throws the ball, and look at the way Glaber Torres throws the ball. It's a night and day difference. Rough comparison, when you look at arm, When you're looking at arm strength, when you're looking at arm strength, it's a night and day difference when you look at the two players. It's not even... It's not even close to being the same. Like, and and that's the deal. And and Maggie, you mentioned it. He might be rushing his throw. We've talked about the footwork. Uh, Flash last night on the Yes Network talked about him dropping his elbow, which led him to spike in the baseball. You know, twenty feet in front of Jay Bruce. Uh, what is exactly going to change here? Because he needed to get off to a good start. He hasn't gotten off to a good start. He's now got to figure it out on a major league level. Yankee fans are watching or in the stadium holding their breath. A ground ball gets hit to him. I'm sure there are guys on that team and on that pitching staff that are holding the breath when a ground ball gets hit to him. So what exactly is all of a sudden going to change here for Glaber Torres defensively? Can you get by with him? Yeah, I mean, you can get by with him if the offense does what they need to do. Don't leave a small village on the base pass. Better with runners in scoring position. Better situational hitting team. Something we've talked about has been kind of the Achilles heel to this lineup. But what exactly is going to figure it out to where Glaber is going to be? Aha, you know what? He's good defensively at shortstop. I don't know when that exactly comes because the Yankees have been trying to figure it out now for months, and you've seen Glaber stagger out of the be- stagger out of the blocks here defensively. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a, a flipping of a switch kind of thing. I think it's going to be gradual. It's going to be taking extra uh, extra grounders, and, and it's going to be trying to get more reps. And the problem is, is that. Like, you can take all the reps you want, and you can get better. Of course you can. But it's impossible to simulate the pressure of an extra inning game that, you know, early on in the season, you still won the series against the Orioles. You're going to beat up on the Orioles. But it's impossible to simulate the pressure. I mean, that's the thing. But you got to hope that, you know, that the coaches, that they can coach it out of him and that he doesn't fully lose confidence to the point where, you know, he's like uh, you know, totally out of his mind out there. It, it, this is the thing. It's not going to be a flip of the switch. It's going to be gradual. Does he look better in May? Does he look better in June? And if he looks worse and worse, then it's going to force the Yankees' hand. I I just don't know that their options are not worse, all that Maggie, amazing. God bless. Well, Moose, I mean, we're six <laughs> games know. in, two errors. I mean, I know, I know. yo. I know, it's been bad. Well, but I, I, I don't think they can do anything right now. I, I, I don't think, and, and I don't know where – where that point is, where the Yankees say, you know, enough's enough. Uh, we, he can't play the position. I don't know where that is. How many games does it cost them? You know, how many base runners, how many max effort pitches when you look at the, you know, innings getting elongated and all of a sudden pitchers have to throw 12, 15 extra pitches. I don't know where we're at there where the Yankees say enough's enough. I know Boone and Cashman, they're going to continue to try and push for it. And as of right now, sitting here in early April, they really don't have a better option about what they're going to do unless you completely move around the infield, you know, make Wade your everyday shortstop, move Glaber to second, make LeMahieu your everyday first baseman, or, you know, and then when Voigt comes back, then you just kind of juggle the lineup, so be it, based on you're never taking LeMahieu out of the lineup. That's that's the other First issue time. you have. Maybe you have LeMahieu play a little third base, but this is the position the Yankees are in. And unfortunately, Glaber Torres has made this a massive talking point because of just how bad he's looked at the position. 